Okay, so here we have um, October 2016, M1 IAL. Uh, question number six. Two cars A and B are moving in the same direction along a straight horizontal road. Car A is moving with a uniform acceleration, 0 0.4 meters per second squared. Okay, now, first of all, this is a nine mark question. All in one go. Not broken up for you, not scaffolded as they say. Okay, so you've just got to climb the whole thing in one go yourself. All right, they don't help you climb it, giving you steps here and there. So, you know, it's um, some, some students look at this, they get a bit, you know, daunted by it. But don't, don't worry, everything is very clear. Okay, as long as you revise properly and you know your stuff, there's no need to worry whatsoever. So, two cars A and B are moving in the same direction along a straight horizontal road. Car A is moving with uniform acceleration. Now, these are some of the key words that will help you understand what to do. Uniform acceleration, that's when we can use the SUVAT equations. Okay, the equations of motion. S, you know, like S equals UT plus a half AT squared, V equals U plus AT, and so on. All right, so we know that this is obviously going to be a question, something to do with that, because they told us there's uniform acceleration. Although, well, that's what it seems, right? All right, so that, that's uniform acceleration, 0 0.4 meters per second squared, that's for A. Car B moves with a uniform acceleration, again, the same phrase, two that equation for B as well, 0 0.5 meters per second squared. At the instant when B is 200 meters behind A, the speed of A is 35 meters per second, and the speed of B is 44 meters per second, find the speed of B when it overtakes A. Okay, so let's make a diagram, always helps to make a diagram. So here's your straight horizontal road. Um, let's say that A is here. Oh, so actually B is behind A. So let's say that. Let's first of all let's say that. Um, let's take this uh, this way as positive. Say they're moving in that direction. Okay, I'm just stating that. So B is behind A. Okay, so B is behind A. So let's say that's B. And let's say that's A. Okay, they're both moving in that same direction. Okay, we we'll call positive. Now, and it's funny how the car just on the circle, but I don't want to bother making these drawings. Now, uh, we know that at the instant when B is 200 meters behind A, so first of all, let's say the, the acceleration of B is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. An acceleration of A is 0 0.4 meters per second squared. And this is constant all the way through the journey. Okay. And at the instant when two, B is 200 meters behind A. So let, let's take this instant. Say this distance here is 200 meters. Okay. That distance there is 200 meters. Okay. That's when time equals zero. That's at the point when time is zero. At that particular point, when time is zero, when time is equal to zero, and the speed of B is, so you can say that's the initial speed of B is 44 meters per second. And the initial speed of A is 35 meters per second. Okay, a certain time later, a certain time and distance later, A and B will both be at the same level. B will be about to overtake A. Let's say that's a distance x. We don't know what it is, let's call it x. Okay, and that's when at a time will be t equals, yeah, it's just a time t. Okay, so that time is common to both of these uh, situations, isn't it? Time is the same, because that's when, that's the point where time is zero for both of them, and at the same time they'll be at the same place, that's when they're going to be overtaking, or we're going to be overtaking A, the same time after this initial situation. So as we deduced from the beginning of the question, we can use the SUVA equations here. Okay, now, so let's look at B and look at A and the SUVA equations. We have SUVA. Always good to write this down. It helps us to organize our information. For A as well, we're going to use SUVA. Try and be neat as I can. Okay, so right now, we, you know, I don't really know how it's going to work out, okay? But I'm just going by what we've given. 
okay, so I know that it's going to work out. You should always be confident that it will work out. Sometimes uh, the road is not clear in front of you until you've got some more information written down. And you, you, know, you can't see the whole picture and don't expect to see the whole picture at the beginning of the question. Okay, you just go step by step. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, and you see the bits that fit together and then in the end you say, oh, that's what I've got to do to solve it. Okay, so we're just using a few bits of information. I've, I've drawn a, a clear diagram which shows all the information. I know that it says constant acceleration, uniform acceleration. So I, get, I know that I'm going to use the SUVAT equations. And let's just deal with B and A separately. Now, the distance that B has traveled between um, the time equals zero and the time equals T is 200 plus this distance, which I'm going to call X. It's traveled 200 plus X. Okay. And the distance that A has traveled is just X. The, dis uh, the initial speed of B was 44 meters per second squared. And the final speed of B is what we actually have to find. The acceleration of B is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So that was 44 meters per second. And the time, that's T, that's common to both of these situations. Okay. Now the initial speed of A is 35 meters per second. Okay. The initial speed of, uh, the final speed of A we don't know. We don't know. But it's different from the final speed of, of, of B, of course. The acceleration is 0 0.4 meters per second squared. And the time, well, that's the same in both of these equations. Okay, both of these. So if we see what we have here, we've got S, both of them in terms of the same variable X. Okay, and we've got T, okay, which is the same in both of them. What's different is, is the velocity of B and the velocity of A, but we have to find the velocity of B. So let's think about all the different equations we could use. For example, let's think about V equals U plus AT. If I was to set up an equation with V equals U plus AT from B, I'll have um, unknown would be VB and T. And from A, I'll have two unknowns, VB and VA and T. But the unknown in, in the second equation will be different from the unknown, one of the unknowns. And so you actually end up with three unknowns. You'll have VA, VB and T three unknowns from two equations, it won't work. So that's not going to help us. So let's think of other uh, equations that we could use. Um, let's say, for example, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. I actually know what I'm going to use right now, but I'm just going through some of the options for you to be able to think. OK, if I, if I use um, v squared equals u squared plus 2s, um, well, again, I have v is I have two unknowns in the Vs, one from an equation with B, one with the equation from A. There will be VB in one of them and VA in the other one. And you have S will have an unknown X. Okay, it will be the same unknown X, but you'll end up with VA, VB and X. You'll have two equations with three unknowns, so that's not going to work either. So let's try another one. Let's try, for example, S equals UT plus a half AT squared plus a half AT squared. Now, if I use this, okay, um, I don't have V in there at all, you see. So I'm, I don't have the problem, okay, with V and VB. Although I want to find VB, but we could find VB if we find some other quantity first. For example, the time. If I know the time it took, I'll be able to find VB. V equals U plus AT. Okay, so if I know what time is, I can find what VB is. So I might be able to find it from here. Let's see. I'm going to have... From one equation, I'll have x and t as unknowns. And from the other equation, I'll have also x and t as unknown. And those x's and those t's are the same. The x here and the x here is the same. And the t here and the t here is the same. So I'll have two equations with two unknowns. So it looks like this is the key for us to solve this problem. OK? So let's now set up our two equations. So I've just got all the, informa whoops, got all the information I need up there. I suppose it all gone. Okay, so I've got all the information I need here. So let's just go ahead and continue. So now, let's let's start with B. We got S, which is 200 plus X equals U. I'm just using this equation. U, which is 44, times T, which is T. We don't know. It's unknown. This X is also unknown. Okay, um, plus a half times a, which is 0 0.5, times t squared. 
Okay, let's just uh, simplify that a bit. That's 200 plus x equals 44t plus, that's a half times half plus a quarter t squared. Okay, that's like one equation. All right, then from A. From A, we've got S, which is X, equals uh, UT, which is 35 times T, plus, and you're going to have um, a half times 0 0.4 times T squared. Okay, let's simplify that and write that as my second equation. Okay, so we have... Um, x equals 35t and you've got a half times 4 over 10, a half times 2 fifths which is 1 fifth, so you're going to have plus 1 fifth times t squared. So we have equation 2. Now, you can solve these simultaneously. I can, um, I can get rid of the x okay, from this equation here if I subtract. So if I do equation 1 minus equation 2 I'll have 200 plus x minus x, which is 200. So I've, got, I've eliminated x now. 44t minus 35t, which is 9t. And 1 quarter t squared minus 1 fifth t squared. Now a quarter minus 1 fifth is going to be 1 twentieth, right? Yes, 1 twentieth. So you have plus 1 over 20 times t squared. So you see we end up with the quadratic equation, which we can solve. We find t. Once we found t, we can then find what v, b is. So now let's um, simplify this by getting rid of the fractions. Multiply both sides by 20, you get 4 and 3 zeros, or 1,000. Multiply this by 20, you get 180t. And this will be plus t squared. Let's make everything on one side and deal with it as a quadratic t squared plus 180t minus 4,000 equals 0. Okay, now, to solve this equation, um, it looks pretty obvious you can factorize. Okay, you could just go straight and use your calculator if you're not sure how to factorize, but this one doesn't seem too difficult. Um, I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me 4,000, and the difference between them is 180. So, for example, let's think of, say, um, 200 times 20. Yes, that's it, 200 times 20. That's going to give me 4,000, isn't it? 200 times 20, and the difference between them is 180. So we're going to have t plus 200 in one bracket, and t minus 20 in the other bracket. So we know that t is equal to negative 200, or t equals 20. Those are the two solutions to this equation. However, we can't have a negative time, so we're going to use take t equals 20. All right? Now, a little point. If you didn't know how to factorize this, if you got stuck, your brain got like, you know, some sort of a block, a mental block or something, then what we could do is, is the following. Okay? Let me just go back to how it normally is. Okay, what you could do is the following. You could um, go to menu, go to the equation function. In this particular one, you have to go to menu and then line. And then you press polynomial, it's a polynomial equation. And then you know it's a degree two because it's quadratic. Then you put the values of, of you know, this is like ax squared plus bx plus c. So you put the, the coefficient of the t squared, which is one, and you press equals. The coefficient of the, um, the t term, which is 180. And plus equals, and then minus 4,000. It's a constant. And then you press equals to get 20 and minus 200. Okay, so that you could write those answers down, and then you can work backwards because in these questions, if you get the right answer, you know, if you just write t equals minus 200 and t equals 20, you'll get the answer. And then you choose, of course, this. Okay. If they're, if they're incorrect, if you write the incorrect values of t, you won't get a method mark even. Okay, You won't even get the method mark for it, because you've just written down two incorrect answers. So it's always good to show that you factorize, or show that you use the formula, Okay, in case you make a mistake. And the calculator can be used as a checking tool. 
but you should show the factorizing step and the uh, quadratic form or the quadratic formula step and in case you you know you you know you made a mistake if you're sure you got the the right answer and you write this this down without this step you will get the full marks for it but if you make a mistake then you won't get the marks but if you try to factorize or you use the formula in a correct way you put the numbers in correctly uh, you get the wrong answer somehow you will lose marks so always it's good to write that step now so to finish off the question uh, we know that v equals u plus a t so let's just um, just to make it clear start the way so you got um, let's do that equations you've got s u i already written them down but that's up there so i'll write them down again v a t now for b s is x we don't know what it is it was x plus 200 wasn't it okay we, i don't think we need that for this u is um 44 meters per second squared uh, v is what we have to find a was 0 0.5 meters per second squared so u was 44 meters per, meter, meters per second a is 0 0.5 meters per second squared and t we know now is 20. So we can say the velocity of B is equal to the initial velocity of VB, which is 44. Remember, I'm using V equals U plus AT. That's what I'm using now, all right? So you've got 44 plus the acceleration, which is 0 0.5, times the time, which is 10. And 10 times 10. Okay, sorry, times 20, times 20. Okay, so you end up with 44 plus a half of 20 is 10. You end up with 54 meters per second. So the speed of B at the point where they collide, or not collide, where, they, where B overtakes A is 54 meters per second. Let's write it in the same formula that they give it. Okay, there is your answer to this question.